and Happy New Year, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and as you saw from our introduction, we are going to be talking about health and fitness. Whether it's your New Year's resolution or just a good idea, hopefully you'll be able to get something out of tonight's show. Before we begin, I want to invite you later on if you'd like to ask a question of our wonderful guest, whom you will meet momentarily, you can always give us a call at 781 two seven zero nine one nine nine I think that's the number yes it's been a while or you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org got a full crew for this evening we have Jolie Atwood and oh wait Stephanie is not here tonight we miss you Stephanie um, Liz Gillespie Dominic Scalini and Jake who is a newcomer and Jake I am sorry I forgot to check for your last name but Jake thank you for coming <coughs> And also Chris Flaherty, who is one of the staff members here, making sure that us volunteers keep the place in relative respectful order. Last but not least, I want to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Hopefully dance class and little hip hop was good for everyone in the household. And hopefully you are home now doing homework. So anyway, now, housekeeping aside, I would like to introduce my wonderful guest, Bonnie Tomasi, thank you for coming. Thank Happy you for New having Year. me. You too. Um, so, January is, they always have those months about everything. And days too. And days too. Although, you know, I do kind of like National Waffle Day. But it is Healthy Weight Awareness Month as well as Family Fit Lifestyle Month. So you kind of cover a little bit of both in your career path right now a little health a little fitness so we will get to that okay but before we get into the topic for tonight can you tell me a little bit about yourself how uh, where you grew up how you came to the Burlington area and what got you interested in becoming a health coach sure so actually I was born and raised here in Burlington Really? So, yes, okay. I'm a townie. You're a townie. <laughs> I'm a townie. I'm a transplant, but I'm starting to feel like a townie. Well, that's a good thing. So, okay. That means you're just part of it. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh, yeah, I was born and raised here. I always thought I'd move away and not come <laughs> back. And then, Guess what? You know what? You learn what a good town it is. It's a great community. They have so many things that are good for children and adults of all ages and seniors. And I also wanted to move back. To raise my family but also I had an aging father so oh. I wanted to be near him as well I never yeah. went that far I pretty much lived here most of my life um, veered off a little Did bit you go to school I went to State Salem State oh, so okay. actually so pretty I commuted so <laughs> still at home uh, oh. yes so and then I got to be friendly with the people that bought my childhood home so I got to see it as it transformed over oh, the years so wild. it's been really nice to still be connected and yeah. how I got into education is um, yeah, coaching is I actually lost um, my mom to cancer when I was 24 Ooh. and she was 65 so I was too young and she was too young uh -huh. and I promised myself then that I would take better care of myself for the kids I'd have someday than she had and at some point I saw that I wasn't quite keeping that promise I knew mm -hmm. I was headed down the wrong path I was like a yo-yo dieter. I'd, my weight would go up, it'd go down, it'd go up, it'd go down. Yeah, I, just, I watch my weight. Right? <laughs> and watch it go up and down like a wave, and I just exactly. couldn't get control of it. And between my children, I have a, my daughter's nine and my son's almost seven. Uh, before I had my son, I was thinking, well, I definitely want to lose the weight, but it's so much work. I'll wait till I'm done having kids. <laughs> And then when I got pregnant with my son, I was like, all right, this is great. This is okay. But when he comes out, I'm going to start something, and I'm going to do something, and that's it. And so I had all these ideas of what I might do, and I'm like, well, that's a gimmick. This is a gimmick. Pro procrastination mode. Right? Well, after I, I you just, have your kid, well, That's when it. He's, I yeah. If I ordered something, it could be waiting for me. When he came out, I'd start, and I w that was it. So, but I was ready. I was really ready okay. to make a change. I just needed him to come first. Yeah. And so I asked a friend what she had done to lose weight. Um, and she filled, she turned me on to this optimal health program mm. that not just helped me lose the weight, it gave me the tools I needed to actually keep it off and end that yo-yo cycle. Oh, and okay. if that wasn't good enough, I decided to pay it forward um, because my background is actually in education. Oh, I, at Salem State, okay. I got my master's in education. Okay. I couldn't get a job in, I couldn't get my own classroom in a public system, so I gave up. Okay. 
I worked in corporate America. Yeah, I worked. I think you'd want your own car. It's t that's tough. It is tough. It is tough. But that's how you pay the bills. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of that necessary evil. Yeah, it is helpful. So I could move out of my parents' house. <laughs> it took a while, but when I did, I was there off and go. going. Um, but then I went to corporate America, and I worked in client support, client um, account management. Okay. So my goal has always been to help and educate and support and help people reach their goals. Okay. And after losing the weight on the program very quickly and learning how to keep it off, I thought I would just share it with a few people. And it turns out... A few people a just few kept... Few kept yeah. Well, you know what? It turned out to be more fun helping other people than getting healthy myself. Really? So, yeah. I mean, to get the thank you for being healthy... I've even been contacted by children of my clients to say thank you wow. for helping my mother get healthier. And as someone who lost her mother too young, can't even tell you how much that wow. means. So you must have teared up the first yeah. time it happened. Yeah, I still do. <laughs> now, is it? <coughs> you know, I've tried diets before, and I know I need to, you know, lose more weight again. Um, have you found it harder to maintain than when you initially lost it? Well, first of all, it's not a diet. That's a big it's a thing. It's a lifestyle change. It is an optimal health program Ooh, okay. that focuses on more than the weight loss. Okay. So you could be thin and unhealthy, right? True. So it's I, I don't want to just be thin. I want to look good and I want to feel good, but I want to have energy I and I want to have longevity. My son will always say, do you want to live to 100? And I'm like, only if I'm living a good life. Exactly. You know, I don't want to just exist. I want to I want to live a long life, but right. I want to have a good one. I want to be able to enjoy the people I'm with. I don't want to yeah. be a burden. So this program really taught me the tools of, of how to be healthy. And it is, okay. it's, you know, it's the eating right, but it's drinking your water. It's dealing with stress. We know stress causes inflammation in the body, mm -hmm. which can lead to certain diseases, heart disease, certain cancers. You know, there's so many issues right. that cause, are caused from stress. Um, and emotional eating, right? So right. if people are overweight, this tends to be reasons that are factoring into that. You know, they're not taking care of themselves. And also, you know, psychologically, <coughs> how you grew up, sometimes yeah. food turns out to be your crutch. Yes. And like you said, emotional eating. It's like, oh, I'm having a bad day. I'm going to grab a cookie. Exactly. Oh, I'm having a good day. I'm going to have a cookie. Exactly. I need to celebrate. <laughs> I'm having a great day. I might as well have a nice uh, hot fudge Sunday. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, Sorry. you know, there's nothing wrong with treats. But a treat should be a treat. Right. You know? So we keep kicking. You're playing footsies I'm with me. I, I know. I'm just <laughs> scoochy. So, oh, so to, to, to keep the weight off, the tools I learned helped me stay a healthy weight. I mean, I would, I would work really hard to lose 10 pounds in a month, and I'd put 10, 12 back on within a month. I just couldn't keep it off. I'd even go exercise not have breakfast and hit Dunkin' Donuts when I left and I swear I'd be going through the drive through <laughs> like this hoping my hoping program. my instructor wasn't going to see me <laughs> and I couldn't get out of my own way I thought I'd be in really good I'm like well I want a treat but I know I have to have protein so I'd get an egg and cheese so they have the protein and then I'd get the donut and they'd be like 10 cents more you can have two donuts like well how do you turn that down so I always said I would have been money. I would have been thinner and richer if I wasn't working out because <laughs> you cannot out exercise your fork it's not possible you know, Wait, say that again. I like you that. can't yeah. out exercise your fork. I like that. You can work out for a couple hours. You can burn a few hundred calories, but you can eat that in seconds. True. Right. So you've got to make the changes. I think I remember hearing once like one M&M, the calories in that M&M, in order to burn that off, you have to like run the length of that a was probably field. one of my posts linda sorry <laughs> no no no. I, I i remember hearing it and it was not sh maybe the person you told me got it from oh you, yeah like how many burpees for a piece of milky way or uh, how many yeah, this was jumping just jacks the, for she this. just did the m, &M just did the m, &M. m yeah people thank me around halloween i start posting those things <laughs> how many you know, calories it's about being mindful right we can exactly. make those choices but be mindful about the choices now had you tried other diet plan or other lifestyle changes you know, Before. I would try to be really good. There was a show I used to like where they um, prepared. Say biggest Loser. No, <laughs> I've never watched that. <laughs> but I think it was, I forget what it was, but they taught you how to make some of your favorite foods for like half the calories. Mm. But, you know, a, a, it's a lot of work and you've got to keep going all the time. And I was, I wanted to live off more than those recipes. Right. And I wasn't doing that. You know, this program teaches you to get in the habit of eating six times a day. Protein, carbohydrate, balanced fuelings every two to three hours. Okay. And that's important. It's not just about what you eat. You know, you need to eat. You, your body's working for you all day. 
and you're eating every two to three hours, you're keeping your blood sugar stable so you don't have those high and low crashes mm -hmm. that make you launch for like the, the unhealthy things. Um, you know, you spike your sugar and then it crashes again. And when you're eating every two to three hours, the right things, it keeps you ahead of hunger, keeps mm. cravings at bay, and it leads you, you know, in a more successful, healthy direction. Mm. So my weight's okay. fluctuated a little bit, but I've maintained a healthy BMI. Yeah, well, everybody always fluctuates a little bit. Yeah, and I've made it, I you mean, know, I like lost my weight. point A to point B usually goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I had my son, mm -hmm. the joy that he is, he caused some problems when I was pregnant. Oh, so yeah. after, so my whole plan to get healthy and lose the weight after he came, exercise wasn't even going to be a part of it. Uh -huh. And exercise is important for, you know, overall health. It's important for weight maintenance. But it, what kind of exercise <coughs> though? Is it you know just cardio or is it weights or is it you know? Well, so that that's the thing. Like on the program, you actually don't have to lift a finger to lose the weight. Your body okay. gets put into with a with a medically developed program and a balance of protein and carbohydrates. It puts you into a state of ketosis, a mild state of ketosis, okay. which is fat burning. And so, without even lifting a finger, though, I encourage people <laughs> to be more active. Mm. You can yeah. lose the weight. It literally falls off because your body uses up the stored carbohydrates in your body for energy, for, you know, just moving every day. Everything you yeah. do, you're using energy. And when you have the carbs in, in your, stored up in your body, it's going to use that before it uses fat. So it uses up the stored ca ca um, carbs, and then it uses your fat as your energy source. And then it literally just melts away. But, you know, it is important to be active. But it doesn't mean you need to become a marathon runner. Yeah. You know, so after I had my son, I had multiple surgeries and procedures, oh. and, you know, I told him he did all the damage he was supposed to do before he was born. Yeah. <laughs> Got to like, stay in and this right now. And you were going to remind him every single yes. day of his life. Yes, 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 yes. He's like, I made you sick when I was in your tummy. I'm like, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Never again. But um, so exercise wasn't even something I could do if I wanted to for months after okay. I had him. And yet I started the program when I was seven, seven weeks after I had him, and I lost oh. almost 30 pounds in three months. Wow. Yeah. How much of that was baby weight, though? It was. I actually weighed less when I started the program than I did before I was pregnant. Oh, wow. Okay. And weight is weight, right? Yeah. I mean, true. once the baby's gone, that's the baby weight. Anything left over is not baby weight. <laughs> well, when, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay, I think we talked about a lot of that stuff. Um, how do you, when you first meet with a client, and we'll talk about how you find clients, <coughs> How do you identify <coughs> what that healthy weight should be? Is it always just, oh, your BMI should be this? Not or at all. Or is it? <coughs> Wrong bite. Yes, I know you need to breathe. Breathing <laughs> is important. Well, the BMI chart is a great guide. Takes into account. Excuse me while I die. Mm. No, keep breathing. Keep breathing. Water. Um, See, water's bad for you. <coughs> it's bad for you. Don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Not while on live television, anyway. Um, <laughs> BMI, ch BMI charts are great. Wait, it takes into account like height and weight, but it's okay. a guide because it doesn't take into account muscle. I actually well, knew somebody. I'm also thinking, you know, is there a separate chart for men versus women because they could be, you know, the same height, but <coughs> they're just built a lot differently, or is it just one BMI chart? I don't remember. You know, I I go by one, and it's the same for everybody. Oh, okay. I'm sure there's a lot of variations out there, but ultimately. You know, it should be between the person and the doctor. Okay. P most people know if they have extra weight on them, right? I mean, if you're if you an extra fifty pounds, but you're a solid muscle, clearly you don't have any weight yeah, to that's lose, true. right? And then it's really a conversation. <coughs> excuse me. People have to have with their doctors. Mm -hmm. Are they healthy? You know, there is a difference. There's a range between healthy and sick. Just because you're not sick does not mean you're healthy. And you right. can be thin and unhealthy. Thin and unhealthy. So it's really about you know what's right for that's you. That's when you take into factors like cholesterol and blood pressure and all that yeah. other kind of fun stuff. Yeah. That Are you pre-diabetic? Are you foggy-minded all the time? You know, not mom brain aside. I was like, well, <laughs> does that count mom brain? I don't think know? so. <laughs> uh, I'm not counting it anyway. <laughs> I keep telling my kids, you know, I gave half my brain to you and half my brain to you, and I'm running out. Well, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. So, you know, it is, like, do you have energy? Are you tired all the time? Do you get headaches? Do you sleep well? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of factors into whether you're healthy or not. And so, so if someone were to go on this lifestyle journey, how do they know when they reach their goal? 
if it's not necessarily about weight, it's about energy level. I mean, if you keep going, will you get more energy or will your blood pressure get even better than, you know, normal? Again, that's, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I'd say that's a conversation with their doctor. But people okay. know when, you, you, you when generally know when you're a healthy weight. Yeah. You know, the B, if, if you're not solid muscle, then the BMI chart is a good range. You okay. know what I mean? You want to be between 19 and 24 okay. on, the, on, the, on, the on, the, um, on the chart. On the chart. But you, you know if, if yeah. you're looking <clears throat> and feeling the way that you should. But how does, how does either gender play a role, you know, because I want to talk about gender. Because in, in my experience, <clears throat> it seems like, you know, men and women both decide that they need to lose weight and men drop it like that. And women just, you know, look at a pizza p piece of pizza and gain 10 pounds. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in your experience, is it, easier for men to lose weight is it the same is it all depending on their motivation i would say there's a very scientific reason why we can dislike them <laughs> okay oh i want to so, hear this so on my on our program you know okay. a typical weight loss is what we can say is typically it's like 10 pounds a month and i see people with oh, a, that's a lot well and people with a lot of weight to lose tend mm -hmm. to move lose more faster and okay. men often lose it twice as fast as women and on and, and I can only I can speak about this program, but not I'm not going to speak about everything. Right. But on the program, the men and women are following the same meal plan, and it's the same calorie intake. Okay. But men expend more energy. So you know how we talked about you okay. use up your stored carbs and then you use up your stored fat. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to go through the stored carbs and through the stored fat faster faster than the woman. That's so you know. That's not fair. I okay. How about like. How does age play a factor? I because when I was in my 20s and 30s, it's like, okay, I need to lose 10 pounds. Boom, it's gone. And now it's like, oh, my God. My doctor told me to lose 10 pounds, and I'm doing great. Only 20 more to go. You know. <laughs> well, you know, your metabolism can slow down, which is why it's important to stay active. Mm -hmm. You know, keep the metabolism going, eating two to three times. It's, it's the habits of health. You just implement those in your daily schedule, you know, and be more mindful of your choices. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can't get away. We don't burn as many calories. We're not running around. Like, look at our kids, right? Yeah. I mean, my son can run circles <laughs> around the house for no good reason. I, I prefer not to do that. Yeah, can we, can we, like, just <clears throat> bottle up that energy? Right? Well, somebody who, I don't know if it was you or somebody once said to me, like, oh, if I had a dollar for all the energy that they had, I'm like, well, we have the same energy. They just suck it out of us. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not running circles. Yeah. We're not, I don't think, unless you're going to work out, <clears throat> we're not really as active as kids. They run on the playground. They run mm. to the school bus. They run from the school <laughs> bus. You know, they're, they're burning it. But your metabolism does slow down. But if you do eat every two to two to three hours, you're keeping your blood, sh your, um, you're keeping your metabolism going throughout the day. Okay, this two to three hour thing. Tell me a little bit more about that. Because is it... <coughs> just smaller full meals or are there certain foods that you should have during certain times of day i mean how does that work out you want protein carbohydrate balance snacks okay you know just an apple isn't going to sustain you you want the protein satisfies you and okay. fuels your body in a healthy way and on the program that i coach on you know you're having the, the program provides a, a um, medically developed fueling scientifically okay. based and it has already got the the perfect balance of protein and carbohydrates okay that combined with your own food that you prepare for dinner or whenever you want to have okay. it or if you go out to eat you follow the same guidelines so what it, it puts you into so it puts you okay. into the fat burning state okay now the fueling i remember seeing that on your website yes is it like little snack bars like jenny craig or wh what is it there's about over 100 to choose from i think oh, there's like wow. bars shakes soups cookies okay. brownies mac and cheese wow. penne pasta i mean if you've okay. got a craving for something it can pretty much be satisfied with something we have. But you also combine it with your own food. So you can okay. go out to dinner. And it's, okay. but we give you guidelines. And so when you combine it all together, mm -hmm. it puts you into that state of ketosis. Oh, and okay. where diets leave off, we keep going. So we're not just, we have uh, a virtual community of support. We have weekly support calls with doctors and nurses. We have a nutritional service team with it is staffed with registered dietitians. Okay. Now, is that just for you as a coach, or is for the that clients. anybody else? Oh, the clients. Okay. Yeah. And then we do weekly webinars, so clients can hop on, see other people, and then they cover a different topic. By you know, many of our coaches present different topics each week. Maybe it's getting through the holidays. Maybe it's you know, 
it's all different topics. It, you know, it, it's just, it's the education and the support that goes with Amazing. it. Um, so we want to fuel people's mind as well as their body and keep them being successful. We want to give them the tools to succeed. To succeed for life. And so where diets leave off, they help you get your goal weight if you get there, right? 90% mm -hmm. of diets fail. That's why I don't even like the word diet. Right. Because 90% well, because it's a diet that fails. <coughs> right. It's they the lifestyle they change. That exactly. They either don't get their goal weight, or if they get to their goal weight, they often put their weight back on, and then some within two years. Mm -hmm. And if you're making the lifestyle changes and adjusting the things that led you to overeat in the first place and make those choices, mm -hmm. then you're setting up for your, yourself for a lifelong transformation, one healthy right. habit at a time. And so what we do is you follow the program, and we have them for all different people with different needs and ages. Okay. You asked about ages. We can help teens through people in their 80s and 90s. I mean, okay. we've had a whole gamut. People want to lose five pounds to well over 100, 200 pounds. So we've got something for whatever, you know, if you've got medical conditions, we usually have workarounds to make okay. it accommodating for them. So I get to know people and see what they need and help okay. them. But once you get to so your... So it's really customized. It is, pretty much. So it, it's pretty standard, but there's something for most people. Okay. And then you, once you get to your goal weight, we have a transition period. Okay. And that's about a four to six week period where we okay. slowly reintroduce food groups you had to exclude, like the higher carbs. Oh, okay. And we slowly increase your calories as we ramp up your metabolism. So you know how we talk about that yo-yo diet cycle? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I was coaching for two years before I realized why I was a yo-yo diet, or I'd explained it, explained it, and then it, the light bulb went <laughs> off one day. I'm like, oh, that yeah, was me. Yeah, tell me about the light bulb. So, so what <laughs> happens when you drastically decrease the amount of calories you take in, your metabolism slows down because right, right. it doesn't have to work so hard. So you're like, okay, I hit where I want to be, and you just increase it quickly, your calories. Even if you're making good choices, mm -hmm. you just jacked up your calories very quickly, but on a slow metabolism, and then the weight creeps right back up. So the transition period is like four to six weeks where you're ramping up your metabolism oh, and increasing okay. your calories, and we're pulling out our fuelings and teaching you how to replace them <coughs> with other alternatives. Oh, okay. And there are some people that will order the fuelings for, for a very long time because they're quick, grab and go, convenient, they're delicious, mm -hmm. but we give you the tools and suggestions. So if you don't, don't wanna be on them for life, you don't okay. need to be. And then maintenance is our third phase, which is we can give you, help you with a meal plan, idea, calorie intake, what's right for your, age, your gender, your activity level okay. to help you sustain your weight loss. Now you mentioned a lot of virtual, the virtual <coughs> meetings, the, vir the, the conference mm -hmm. calls. Is everything virtual or do you actually meet one-on-one -on -one and, you know, s see who you're working with? Like well, when I have an opportunity to see my clients in person, that's wonderful, but mm -hmm. I coach throughout the country. So, okay. I mean, I coach by phone, email, texting, whatever works for them. Okay. Um, but so, you know, I'll even do like, um, I can't even think of the word, but you know, Zoom okay. calls, oh, you know, okay. whatever like works. It, it's nice to have, or? yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it's nice to see it, put a face to it. And we have events throughout the country sometimes. So sometimes we might have dinners locally at a friend, oh, at a fellow okay. coach's house and okay. we, we invite people to join us. Or sometimes we have events or hotels to introduce the program. We welcome clients and people that want to learn more about the program. So, oh, okay. you know, it's nice when we can meet people yeah. in person. But I've, I've, I'd say many of my clients have been th from throughout the country. Wow. Yeah, Arizona, Illinois, Wisconsin, you name it. Word of mouth. Just out <coughs> of curiosity. When you meet a client, how do you know that it's a right fit for you? For me? Yeah. I just want to work with people that want to get healthy. I mean, I'll help anybody, mm -hmm. but honestly, the ones that are going to be successful are the ones that really want to make a change. Okay. You know, the program works for anybody, Cause like, anybody that will follow it. Is it is a lifestyle change, and <coughs> you just think about your lifestyle, and you meet people, and some of them become your friends, and mm -hmm. some of them are just acquaintances and will remain acquaintances. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with a coach, you have to have something that clicks in order to really know if it's going to work for you because that's kind of half the battle. So, you know what? I, I tell people, like, if you give it a month, mm -hmm. you'll see that it works and you'll want to stick with it. Okay. And if someone doesn't even want to give it a month, like, I can't, th that's the hardest part of my job yeah. is I know how easy this is. There's no counting points, okay. no counting carbs, no counting <coughs> calories. 
It's so yeah, I have simple. I a hard time counting anything. I, 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 you know, I wouldn't have done that when my kids were babies, and I wouldn't do it now. Like, I, I can't, I, I, I can't be can't bothered. Focus on That's that, a lot yeah. of work. It's a lot of work. So this is simple. Like, literally, you open five packages a day, and you prepare one meal. I'm mm -hmm. big fan of cooking in bulk. So if I make a healthy recipe, I'll do it so I can eat. Like, I might make five servings. I might freeze three, mm -hmm. have a couple. But if you do that a few times, you then have like a freezer full of things you can pull mm -hmm. out that are healthy. So I'll check your mic just to make sure. My mic? All right. I don't know. Is it me? Yeah, I don't know. Let's How's that? Okay. I think that They'll let us know if it's well. I think that might be worse. Okay. So there we go. All right. Okay. We'll see. Um, <laughs> so how long do you, you know, speaking of clients, <coughs> and you meet with them, and you start them on their journey for this, this lifestyle change, how long is there like a, a set time frame, like once they're on maintenance, they move on, you move on? I don't move on. They can keep finding me. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I like to check down. in. I like to, okay. if they're on Facebook, I like to stay connected, let them okay. see. You know, I share success stories. Do you have like your own fa uh, own work Facebook page? I don't. Okay. I don't because I find like I want to reach people that may not necessarily be looking for something. And okay. they may not be looking for them. They might see something I post one day. And a family member might have said to them, I've just been trying to lose weight or I just found out I'm pre-diabetic, mm -hmm. you know, and then the light bulb goes off, you know, and I'm proud of what I do and I want everybody to see how, you know, I can help people. So I like to, you know, okay. uh, you'll see more pictures <laughs> of my dog on Facebook than the program. Well, yeah, but that usually <laughs> happens to, yeah. well, that's what Facebook is for, you know, right. cats and food. <laughs> healthy food and not so healthy food. So... I don't know if we talked about this, but on your website, it talked about the optimal weight five and one. Five and one. Yes. What does that mean? So that is, you know, like I said, we've got different programs with different people. We have a teen okay. program. We've got a program for someone with uh, people with gout, people okay. with diabetes. We have a program for nursing moms and seniors, depending on the activity level. Okay. Sometimes they can do the five and one. Sometimes they need to do something more modified. Okay. So the five and one is the one the general population, most okay. people follow, where five times a day you have these medically developed um, fuelings. Okay. They are, I don't know if I mentioned, but they are like rich in protein. They're high okay. in protein, 11 to 14 grams. Wow. They're low in fat, low in the glycemic index, <clears throat> and they have probiotics for intestinal health. Okay. So they have, would have like five of those a day and one lean and green, which is... A healthy amount of vegetables um, and protein, okay. and we give you guidelines on how to prepare it. And, oh, you know, okay. you can split it, you can have a dinner, you can have lunch, breakfast, whatever okay. you want. Um, but that's the core one that okay. people follow. So, with the five and one. fuelings, yep. <coughs> is that also like, nor like normal food incorporated in it, or is it? You could, like if you okay. wanted the fueling soup. You could okay. maybe add a little protein to that and have a little bit less with your lean uh, and green meal. Okay. So you could. There's mashed potatoes. You might want to have a little protein with that at lunchtime. I'm an Irishman. I need potatoes. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Except for I never saw any child, you know, tangent. <coughs> My child, when he was probably two years old, tried mashed potatoes, pulled them out of his mouth, <coughs> and was like. <coughs> My son won't even try them. I'm like, how do you <laughs> not eat, you know, how do you take mashed potatoes out of your mouth? It just blew my mind that anybody would do that. You know, usually you just swallow it and move on, but. You know, they would get along great. Or even <laughs> just spit it out, but. So, what are some of your thoughts about, like, other diets? Because, you know, as somebody looking at, like, the 10,000-foot level at your plan, all I keep thinking is like the whole Jenny Craig thing where come and eat our food and, you know, you lose the weight. Why would I choose your plan over something like that? First, I don't like the word diet. Yeah, I know. All right. All right. <laughs> but no, yeah, a lot, but a lot of them are diets. Yeah. A lot of them help you lose. I mean, you could basically reduce okay. calories and lose weight, right? I mean, you just can. Okay. But it's really about learning the habit of health system. You get a free health coach. Nobody pays for me. The, the program compensates me. Oh, okay. I know a lot of some diets, you're paying for food mm -hmm. and you're paying for support or maybe you're paying per pound. I don't even know how all those things work. But And a lot of them don't focus on lifelong transformation. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I know some people do certain programs because they can eat 
bacon cheeseburger fries and a shake and still lose weight. <laughs> they may not be able to eat anything else that day, right. but they can eat that. What have they just learned about health? Yeah. And that may not be how these programs are intended, mm -hmm. but you know, this program is really designed in being healthy. And, and, and that's what was my draw. I didn't want to just lose weight. I didn't want a yo-yo diet. Or I want to be around for my kids. Mm -hmm. So I want to make life, lifelong changes. And you get a free health coach. And I think I'm pretty good. Cool. <laughs> you know, there's other coaches, you, you, you know. You're not the most objective opinion. I'm not but, the know. most objective. <laughs> but I think my clients would agree. There you go. <laughs> you have clients. So there you go. There now, you go. I'm just looking at my next, you know, my next little note here. And, you know, I just mentioned my son and his loathing <laughs> for mashed potatoes so you have small you know young kids they're not small anymore um so they're about the same age as mine and when we you know <clears throat> fix a dinner it's like okay i just want to fix one meal i don't want to become the short order chef and make something for this person and something for that person and something for that person and as I'm trying to eat healthier, I'm realizing that my kids refuse to try new things. So how, in your experience, if you did, did you overcome that obstacle and get your kids not starving? I love this question. <laughs> I love does that make sense? It does. And, okay. I, and, and how do you incorporate the healthy choices with yeah. kids? And I really love this question. My child would rather get like 100 flu shots than eat a carrot. You know, it's like. I understand. <laughs> so my daughter was begging for broccoli at 10 months old. She go to the friend's fridge saying, Brocky, Rocky. Wow. And I didn't expect another one like her, but I did not expect my son. <laughs> he would yeah. give Evan a run for his money. <laughs> So until about five, I don't know, until a few months ago, okay. he had like five foods that he ate. <laughs> it was, we couldn't go to a restaurant unless they had a uh, hot dog or pizza. And it couldn't be a hot dog and a corn dog thing and take off the corn dog. Like it had to be hot dog or pizza. Oh, okay. About a year, two years ago maybe, we started eating chicken nuggets at home. And it started with a piece of popcorn chicken to a chicken nugget. And it took like another year to go to a chicken nugget at a restaurant. Well, and then wow. literally in the last few, mon uh, few months, we've like opened up the horizons. I, I, I got him into like, I got him to like um, eating pancakes. We literally tried pancakes a few months ago. And like, see, see, all my kid would eat is pancakes. And I know? told him like, see, I told you, I'm not gonna steer you wrong. It's good. And I'll deal with getting him healthier. Okay. Later, I need to get him eating stuff, right? Right. So yeah. I, I'll I'll sneak in the things I already did. He came home one day. I mean, and I got him to eat a hamburger one day. It's cost a little bit of money, a little bit of bribery, yeah. but whatever it takes. But then the meat hamburger led to a meatball, and the meatball led to tacos. And, like, I've got, you know, for wow. me, I do like tacos. If it was just me, I, I would cook ground turkey, and I don't even need the shells. I'm happy with the ground turkey, a low-fat cheese, guacamole, salsa, and eat it on a plate because, to me, that's the best part of a yeah. taco. My, I, I don't even have hamburger buns in my house. Like, oh, I idea. buy lean beef and make burgers and grill up vegetables and pop it on top. My daughter, when she has burgers, she's not a huge fan, but when she does, she eats it without the roll. So, you know, cool. and, and it's... Yeah, see, my Evan would just eat, eat the, the roll. Eat the roll, right? As long as it's not been contaminated by, by the, you know, meat. <laughs> the meat. Oh, there's a spot of meat on there. I it's, can't eat it. It's a process. But I find that, you know, one of the side effects of the program or any time anytime somebody tries to do something, get healthier... It trickles to the family, you yeah. know, and, and I, a lot of people, you know, well, while we have kids that are younger, we're mm -hmm. still buying the food, right? True. We're still buying the food. So you might not be able to make him eat a carrot, but he can't eat chips unless you buy them. True. Right? And if people, and, and snacks are okay. I know a lot of people feel like, oh, well, you know, the kids are going to burn it off. What does it matter? You know, I don't care what my kids eat. They can eat what they want. And that's their choice. That's fine. Yeah. But I also see that is I know we actually recently had this conversation, didn't we? I know. <laughs> but we're setting up them up. They might not show, you know, the side mm. effects of eating a lot of junk food at this point, but we're setting them up with habits that can take them with them for the rest right. of their life. And I don't think I was taught healthy eating habits. Like I had right. a brother that was. But severely I was also told that's what's for dinner. You're gonna eat that. But we also have those kids that would starve first. Yeah. 
right? Well, That's I mean, true. that actually is not true, right? We know this. Some, <laughs> I had a, my son starved for three days because he, he put his foot down. So that was yep. a little obstacle. So I know. But, but they're not going to eat something. If you, if you don't buy junk food, they're not going to eat it. Okay. And for, in my home, you know, my son finally started eating a vegetable. It's salsa. But I'll buy chips, but I buy chips with veggie pureed mixed uh, in. And if I can okay. find them baked, I'd buy them baked. Right. But at least I got a vegetable into them. So once I got a vegetable, I'm like, now you don't get a snack or a dessert unless you have a vegetable. Uh, but we are in control. Yeah. To, you know, to some extent, we, we do have some flexibility. But I, I mean, I had a brother that was very obese until high school. And I struggled a little bit in middle school with my weight. But then most of the time, it wasn't mm. bad until I lost my mom. That's when the weight yeah. crept on. But, you know, I, I would come home from school and sit there and watch General Hospital with a huge bag of cheesy popcorn. Not a bag, a whole bag. And a I'd bag. eat the whole thing. Yep. I wish someone said, you know what, have a little bit. And, yeah, here's some vegetables. Or, you know, I love vegetables, yeah. but I just didn't learn moderation. So when it caught up with me when I was older, you know, my best form of staying healthy, is I try to not even buy the stuff. I'm not saying I got yeah. the willpower to have five chips. I have the willpower <laughs> not to buy the chips. Yeah. <laughs> So I think we instill that in our families, and we have to instill that in our kids when they're young. And if they happen to start, no. <laughs> so, how, you know, you're just kind of like trying to transition. Oh, I wish, I'm, I'm still thinking, going, I wish I could get my kid to eat something. It costs anything. me money, five bucks. Yeah. Five bucks. No. I take them out to eat. You say five dollars if you try it, if you eat this. And if you keep eating it, you get the five bucks. Okay. Well, it got expensive. <laughs> But did your daughter say, well, how come he gets paid and I don't? No, I pointed out in other ways she got rewarded. I okay. mean, you know, she wasn't losing out. Oh, because I, I, I did alive and well in our house. I forget. I know. We got that. We have that, too. <laughs> I forget what it was, but I pointed out. I'm like, you know what? How many times did we go buying books and stuff? Like, you're doing all yeah. right. And she's like, yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah. I said, plus, if we get him eating more foods, then we can go to more restaurants. And then it's a win-win. <coughs> yeah, okay. when it was just pizza hot dog, dinner out was not that exciting. Yeah, yeah where do you go? It, yeah, it, <laughs> it's like the nines, um, pizza places. I mean, yeah. it's very limiting. Yeah. So she sees, she saw the benefit of getting him to eat new food. <laughs> I just get frustrated because it's like a lot more when they were younger than now, but we'd go over <laughs> someone's house and, you know, they'd eat an entire pint of blueberries which is amazing you know it's like yes you're eating fruit and, and so you run out to the grocery store and you buy the blueberries and they end up rotting in the refrigerator when my daughter was um maybe a year and a half we had a play date at the food court at the mall and i went to pizzeria regina and i got a veggie pizza and and all the other moms like oh my gosh if my kid would ever eat that exactly. you know and then i got my son payback <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah payback so let's talk a little bit more about, you know, exercise and how that, you know, other than the calorie exchange program, which we realize isn't always an equal balance, but we are in Family Fit Lifestyle Month. Mm -hmm. And because it's early in the new year, a lot of people are making New Year's resolutions. And on TV, it's like you see the ads for the gym going <laughs> You know, join now for free, and it's only a dollar a month. How important is exercise? And how do you, f do you know how to find the right exercise for your lifestyle? How do you do that? So I'm not a personal trainer, and I'm not a doctor, okay. but I'm a person. Yes. And if you're going to get a gym membership and not go, don't get one. Exactly. It's not doing you anything. But you might go for like, you know, a month <clears throat> and then fall off. So... It's about finding something you like yeah. and find something you can fit into your schedule. And I'll give a plug to Nine Round. <laughs> okay. I've had issues. Beat the crap out of a Oh, it's bag. fun. <laughs> but I've had issues. I've had some medical issues not related to weight or anything. And I've had different things that got in my way in my schedule. I'm a single mom. You know, I've, I've had obstacles getting to gyms. Mm -hmm. Daycare was during nap time or, you know, things just didn't work for a number of reasons. And... I, I found nine round and yes, it's fun punching out some <laughs> aggression, but you do it with a big smile on your face, yeah. but it's 30 minutes in and out, right? Cool. You, it starts when you get there okay. <clears throat> and I can bring my kids. If I have to go in the morning, I have them. I can, they get on the bus. I can pop in. I'm in and out in like 30 minutes. And, and so I found something that I could fit into my lifestyle okay. and I look forward to doing. 
you know? Oh, but cool. but it doesn't mean become a marathon runner. It doesn't mean join a gym. Right. Maybe just be more active and get your kids active, right? I, you know, I think one of the things we talked about was, you know, a family fitness plan. Just be active. Yeah. Go explore the city. Be moving. Go to the trampoline park and jump with your kid. <laughs> I, I yeah, did last it. The time first I did that, my chiropractor got mad at me because <laughs> well, I couldn't move for two months. Then find a different option. Yeah. But you know, it's but just tr being trampoline active. parks are out. But you know, bicycle I, rides or just different ways that you can join as a family and you get that get them yeah. active and yourself at the same time. But oh. a gym membership does nothing if you're not going to go. That's true. If it's home, if you're good, I'm not that disciplined at home. If <laughs> I'm trying to exercise at home, I think of everything else I should be doing in my house. Yeah. Okay. What about some other <laughs> like? Before, you know, jumping into a plan and giving it 110% doesn't always work because it's too much change too fast. So what about, like, I know we mentioned drinking water. Mm -hmm. Would that be, what would be a good place to start? Would it just be drinking X number of ounces a day or how would somebody go about starting to... Well be healthier honestly I, I think a health coach is a great guide to have okay. and a free health coach is even better oh yeah right but just you know water that's great but that's not making huge strides if you yeah. really want to make a change just make a change and just make a commitment when you're ready so I was actually I talk at different events every now and then okay and I, I, I was at another event once and someone went up to me it's like you're the dog food lady I'm like, the dog food lady? I didn't even have my dog back then. I'm like, okay. we're the dog food lady. She's like, I heard you speaking at events once, and you said you were so ready to make a change. You would have eaten dog food if you had to. And I said, that's right. I would have. <laughs> like, I was ready to make a change. Fortunately, the fuelings taste amazing. But a lot better than dog food, A I'm lot sure. better than dog food, but I was ready to make a change. <laughs> Are we talking canned dog food or kibble? <laughs> you know? I'd go for the kibble for us. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, the canned stuff. But you know what? I was ready to make a change, and I'm going to do it. And if you're not really ready to make a change, then you're going to always have excuses. So you have to, your why, you, that's the thing. You really have to look deep inside why, why you want to lose the weight. Why, or even if you don't have the weight to lose, why do you want to be healthier? For me, it couldn't be more powerful. I lost my mother too young. I am not doing that to mm -hmm. my kids. I'm just, I'm just not dying young. Yeah. Not an option. Not an option. So, I mean, I want to be around for them, and okay. I want to watch their kids grow up. You know what I mean? So, but your why you want to get healthy has to be more powerful than the why you want to have the junk on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just have to, once yeah. you know that you're ready to make a change, you're just going to do it. And if you give anything about a month, and if it works, yeah. you, you're going you're gonna to stick with it. You're going to feel good, especially on this program. When you're in fat burning, you're not hungry. You don't have cravings. You've got energy. Like, why would you not want to feel that good? It's so it's no really brainer. not hard. Yeah. It's really not hard. But it's about finding something that works for you. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's the hard part is finding. Okay, so speaking of finding things, <clears throat> how do you find your clients? You know, I don't even know how I got my first clients. But I just, I talk and I share my story. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that inspires people and they want to know so what I did. Like the whole dog food thing. Yeah, like the whole dog food oh, thing. Okay. Right? But, I mean, I've just, I've been out and about and, you know, I've, I don't even How know. How much do you have to travel, though? I don't. I actually go to conventions once a year. Like, okay. I love it. The last convention, there were about 11, 12,000 of us wow. coaches for this program. It, it, when I first went, I think it was 2,500 people. And we've gone international. We're in Singapore and, um, oh, my God, I'm going to have a mental block. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of getting close to my I can't even go too. there right now. But uh, we've just expanded and we just keep growing and we just want to, you know. So how new or old is this particular plan? The program has been around now for this about. this is the COPE? So I'm COPE certified. COPE certified. What and does that mean? The cred credential is, it's a certification program th um, through the program that I coach on. Okay. And it was through, my training was through the Villanova University Center for Obesity Prevention and Education. How's that? Say, Say that, that fast. five times fast. <laughs> yeah. so I, I can't even repeat right? it. Right? So. But basically, it's reiterating what I learned just doing the program and okay. learning about how to coach and help others, you okay. know, follow the same suit. But basically, once you've done the program, you can share it and help okay. people. So, so convention. Convention. It's, an, an, it's incredible. We just do workshops. We, we spend um, the days learning about how to be a better coach and how to help more people and help be, people to be successful. And at night, we have a great time. 
So for me as a single mom, like that's my one weekend away where I am kid oh, free. Oh, just a weekend? It's just a weekend. Oh. It's like Thursday to Sunday, and I've gone, okay. I, I think, for the past five years or so. And it's it's a blast. We're, I mean, you cannot find 12,000 happy people anywhere else in the world, I don't think, all together. Wow. Like, I mean, you know, we're all about positivity and health and life transformation. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing. It's not like some medical convention. Like, you know, it is like pure joy, and you meet genuine people every time you turn around. Cool. Yeah, it is. And they have feelings all over hidden. They, they, they do. When we get to, they usually release some new ones that we get to try. Ooh. And <clears throat> oh, yeah, fun. Yes, but we always have like a nice event at the end and celebrate and. So how long have you been doing this program? So I, my son was born in April, in two thousand thirteen. Okay. I started the program in June. Of yeah. Of yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, thirteen. I lost my weight. In like two and a half like in three months and I started coaching a month in I actually like I said oh really I wow. really thought I was just gonna help people just mm -hmm. you know if you've got like this good thing why would you keep it to yourself and I know people who wanted some help and I'm like well I did this it was great and it just took off from there and it actually it was not only did I transform my physical health I transformed my mental and financial health because I was in a very unhealthy marriage mm -hmm. and what started out as me just wanting to help a few people became my method of still being home with my young kids and being a, you know, go on my own. Right. So it's, it was, I'm the full transformation Switch. right here. <laughs> so how, roughly how many <coughs> clients have you gained over the past uh, 2013 to 2020, 2020? I've probably, I'm sure I've coached over a hundred, maybe 200. Mm. You know, someone for a short term, some people for long term. Some people have five pounds to lose. Some people have more to lose. So people come and go. So <coughs> what are your stay. plans for the coming year? Well, for personally, I just plan on keep improving myself. I mean, I still have to work on drinking water, apparently without <laughs> choking. <laughs> yeah, well, that would without help. Without choking would help. Um, and I still have, you know, I'm a single mom. I got a lot of responsibilities in life in general, for whether you're single or not, can be stressful. So mm -hmm. stress management something I'm still working on, you know? It's, it's right. like a lifelong journey. Managing my stress. <clears throat> Managing stress. And, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to be mindful of the food that mm -hmm. I eat. But being active, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. But I still look forward to going to work out. So the more I can fit that into well, yeah, my life. you could just play some of that aggression. That's it. It's really good. Someone annoyed me today. All right. Let's All take right. it out. Let's spar today. So it was a lot of fun. And then professionally, I just want to keep helping people. And if I can mentor more people that might like the freedom that I got from mm -hmm. coaching, I'm happy to do that. It helps keep me accountable. So to be honest with you, That's true. you know, my kids keep me accountable to my health because I want to be around for them. But also, oh, yeah. uh, being a health coach, it doesn't look that great if I went back to where I started. Yeah. <coughs> or like we said, when you gain back, you know, with the yo-yo thing, yeah. if you gain yeah. back, you gain that plus a whole right. lot more. Yeah. So what about five years? Just keep going the same, you know, steady growth or? Keep going and help more people. Oh. Yeah. I like what I'm doing. Why change it? It ain't broke, don't fix right? it. Right? I wouldn't mind starting a whole little division of my own in Singapore. But Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd want to travel to Singapore. <clears throat> I don't know. My brother goes out there every now and then. He, new area. I don't think I could get that time off from my kids. Yeah, no, that would be kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any, like, memorable moments? You know, like the light bulb that we had talked about before. <clears throat> what is your most memorable coaching or your most memorable um, clients? You know, it's funny. It's, um, well, so some people tell you very personal things or very okay. funny things. Okay. And I literally had one client call me once and she's like, oh my God, she texted me, Bonnie, I'm having a problem. Like, I have a problem. I'm like, what? Just, you know, call me now yeah. and tell me, what, you know, what is it? She's like, my underwear doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So that was probably one of my funniest <laughs> messages from a client. Yeah. Um, but the most. TMI, TMI. Right? Yeah. But one of the most heartfelt, I would have to say, is when I got the, the message from a, a daughter saying, thank you for helping my, my mom yeah. get help. Uh, that one hits home. That one does. Yeah. Okay. Um, logistics. You said it's a free health coach. Yes. Through this, <clears throat> this plan. But. Something's somehow I get you. paid, right? Yeah, somehow you get paid. How expensive right. is this? So mo I personally saved money when I did the program. 
I sp it's about twelve dollars a day for five okay. fuelings a day. That's five meals and snacks a day. You're literally getting one meal okay. on your own. <clears throat> I spent about ten dollars a day getting fat at Dunkin' Donuts every day. Hmm. Right. So most people find the program cost neutral to what they're already spending. Okay. If you take out, you know, some people think, well, I still have to shop for my family. Well, you have to shop for your family, but you're a whole adult now yeah. only eating one time a day, right? Yeah. So this should be a lot less food that you're buying or should last longer, right? Okay. And so it's not like additional money. It's just more like a reallocation of the food funds. Okay. Right? So I saved money because I did like to eat out a lot yeah. and apparently at the very wrong places. But you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you're, you know, it, it's, you know, this is like a, a shift. Okay. Um, but most people find it cost neutral. And even if it didn't cost exactly the same as what you're spending, it okay. can't be that much more than you're already spending. <clears throat> True. So, you know, there are places where you're paying just to walk in and stand on a scale. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. if you could pay a little bit, in, in addition to what you're already spending on right. food. But again, most of my clients find it cost neutral. And I'll even tell people like, you know what? I know you think it's expensive, mm -hmm. perhaps. Calculate everything you put in your mouth over the next week. Right. And I usually call back and like, you're so right. You know, if you're, <clears throat> and you're finishing your kids' food when you're eating their food. Okay. If you're making grilled cheese, one of my events, um, one of the events, a fellow coach was speaking. He's like, I used to eat half a pound of cheese making my kids grilled cheese. That's a lot of cheese. That's a lot. I used to do that. Oh, my gosh. I used to get extra. I, I couldn't go near the stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah, cheese. It's a lot of cheese, but it's very easy to do. You just slice here and a slice there. That adds up. A handful of grapes. It adds up. Everything that you put in your mouth has what, a cost. What, fruit's bad for you? It's not bad for you. It's good for you, but it's <laughs> high in carbs. Yes, it so is. So on the program, you'd okay. actually be taking a break from the fruit because you want to keep the carbs down and the protein up. But you reintroduce it during that transition period. Oh, you reintroduce the food, okay. the fruit, and like those higher carb vegetables. No, it's very good. It's good. Okay. But I also learned portion control. I used to think a healthy, a bowl of grapes was a healthy snack. Well, that was about three days worth of fruit. <clears throat> I learned yeah. that a healthy snack is this many grapes, yeah. maybe twice a day. So it really transformed how I looked at food and everything. But yeah, I saved money on the program. Most people find it cost neutral. It's just a reallocation of how you're spending money on food. Now, you were mentioning, you know, <coughs> yes, the grapes, but also the Dunkin' Donut thing. National Donut Day hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> but I'm also thinking, though, just <coughs> habits. Yes. Like, I never went to Dunkin' Donuts before I had kids. And after my daughter was born, it's like, yeah, I need the caffeine fix. And, yeah, I'm just going <coughs> to go through the drive through it, you know. And I'm just going to get a coffee or I'm gonna get a coffee and a mm -hmm. donut well sometimes I'm not even hungry but I'm just like yeah I feel like a donut so well I don't feel like a donut I feel like I want to eat a donut <laughs> and then after I eat it you feel, I feel like, like a, a donut, donut. <laughs> but how you know even if on this plan you're not hungry or you don't have these cravings but just out of habit you're like I think I need a coffee you can or, have coffee. Or I'm I never saying, went down this plan. <laughs> okay. But I'm just like other things. Like you yeah, don't just, you don't break bad habits. You replace bad habits with new habits. Okay. And you're. I mean, a lot of the fuelings are chocolate. I mean, there's 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 savory, there's crunchy, there's chewy, there's there's something. You know, there's pancake. Mm -hmm. But there's chocolate too. So if you're craving something sweet, you're getting that. Yeah. And you know, in, 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 in about three to five days, you're in fat burning and you're feeling good. And you're not going to blow it for a donut when you can have a hundred and like a 110 calorie bar with 11 to 14 grams of protein that tastes just as good. We got a bar that tastes like a, no, sorry, a Girl Scout Thin Mint cookie. <clears throat> I had, I had. Yeah, don't even mention those. <laughs> I have 36 cases. But of there's Girl literally Scout cookies a bar that tastes like those. And at Halloween, when I post those little reminders of how much, uh, how many calories in every little yeah. thing, I could have a 60. Was it like 60 calories, 40 calories for like this, you know, bite size, mm -hmm. or I could have a 110 calorie bar that's gonna fill me up for hours. Yeah. You know, it's you're not sacrificing as long as you're getting things that satisfy you mentally, and physically. Mm -hmm. I don't think you feel deprived. And when you feel, you see results, it's even easier. I mean, I, I, I will have my cider donuts, like an apple okay. picking, but oh, that's yeah. it. It's like once or twice a year. That's fine. That's my little indulgence. Mm -hmm. I like that. But I was addicted to Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, I just, I was. And now I can go and get a coffee. 
and I'm fine. I just, I, I, I love the places that post the calories too. Oh, okay. Now, is this just a calorie thing? Because I thought it was also, you it's know, a, carbs you want good calories. Okay. You want good calories. On the program, you're not counting calories, but okay. just in life. Yeah. Right? I mean, if, it's about being mindful, right? So if you're looking and you see how many calories and things, you, you might think, when you're mindful, you're paying attention. Okay. You know? When you're not mindful, you're just eating and you don't care what you see. But when you're mindful about your choices, you, you know, we have this motto of stop, challenge, and choose in mm -hmm. the program. It's like stop, whether you want to scream at your kid, your husband, or eat a d five donuts. Stop first. Mm -hmm. Challenge. Is it going to help me reach my goal? Or is it going to set me back? If I yeah. do this, where is it going to send me? And then choose. If you choose to go for the donut, at least you've done it with mindfulness. Okay. <clears throat> you know, not on the program. Yeah. But if you're going to have it, have it once in a while. I choose to have cider donuts when I go apple picking. Mm -hmm. I also choose not to get donuts every time I go to co get a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, 350 calories you probably don't need. Yeah. And I used to think muffins were a better choice than, than the donuts. The muffins are like 600 calories, oh, yeah. I think. Well, they're I was like twice stunned. the size, too. I used to think they're actually filling. Well, that's because filling. they cover it in sugar, too. You know? Yeah. But like, I actually used to think that that was a smarter choice back in the day. Muffins are healthy. Yeah. And cupcakes are when I make them at frosting home. are, you know, <laughs> healthy too. <laughs> so what do you do like on special occasions, like for birthdays or something? Mm -hmm. I'll have a piece of cake. I'll indulge. Okay. As long as it's not like every day is a birthday. That's it. Well, see, that's a thing too, right? <laughs> Everybody's, uh, every day is somebody's birthday. <laughs> well, this, then there'll be people like, well, I want to get healthy, but I want to get healthy after the holidays or after this. And like I point out to people, there's always a holiday, there's a birthday, there's a graduation, there's a, you know, there's, al life. there's always a celebration, there's always something coming up. You need to make choices. And for people that are on the program. It's a leap year. We got right? Oh, there you go. Year. Well, every four years, it's better than some of the other well, holidays. Well, this year's a leap year. <laughs> right? Oh, it's a full moon. You know? Right. So, I mean, you have to be mindful. Like, you know, even if people are on the program, I've coached them through these challenges. Like, if you're going to a party, Bring something to share that's compliant with the program. Mm -hmm. Bring it so you know you can stay on plan. Make a brownie from the program. Bring it. I actually did that once when I, I, um, I had some type of a meeting when I first started the program. And I knew every time you go to those meetings, they had munchkins. Now, what okay. I tell you, me, donuts, we had a love affair, right? So I made a brownie, and I brought it with me, and everybody else around me ate their munchkins. And I had my, my brownie, and I didn't feel deprived at all. So if you go into Until things... Until everybody else wants a piece of your brownie. <coughs> they weren't going to get it. <laughs> so if, if you go into things prepared, okay. you can make the choices to get around it. Cool. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm happy to help people. Like, just if they just want to get ideas and, and okay. learn more about how I help people. Maybe for them, maybe for someone they know. I actually just got a referral who I spoke with, who's mm -hmm. signing up, and he's like, well, I think this would be great for my sister. He hasn't even started. I talked to her. She and her husband are going to be sa starting up. Wow. So one referral, and I'm helping, like, a whole family. Cool. Or part of a family, anyway, so. Which, and they tell two friends, there and they go. tell two friends, <coughs> and so on and so on. Well, great. Well, thank you very much thank for coming. You. We are just about out of time. Thanks for having me. So I learned a lot. Good. And I'm hoping to get motivated. I'm still working choice. on finding my it's, why. I've been looking it. for three years, but <laughs> I'm still looking for it. <laughs> Getting closer. You'll get but there. Thank you very much You're for welcome. joining me this evening. And I also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in. And I hope you found our conversation as enlightening and inspiring <laughs> and <laughs> New Year's resolution, not really. It's a lifestyle change. Yes. So I hope you found found some bit of information that will help you this evening. So anyway, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you around town. Good night.